Welcome to Physician Focus, a program brought to you by the Massachusetts Medical Society. I'm Sean Palfrey, a pediatrician at the Boston Medical Center. In today's episode, we will hear from leading local physicians about a condition that is both common and deadly, the flu. Flu season starts in early fall and it runs through late winter. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in the United States, millions of people are sickened. Hundreds of thousands are hospitalized and thousands or tens of thousands of people die from the flu every year. Today, we will learn about what exactly the flu is, how it differs from the common cold, and why it's so important for everyone over the age of six months to be vaccinated. First, Robin Ali, a public health expert at the Massachusetts Medical Society, will interview Dr. Benjamin Kruskal, a pediatrician at Atrius Health. We're here in Newton with Dr. Ben Kruskal, Chief of Infectious Disease and Travel Medicine at Atrius Health. What are the symptoms of colds and flu? Sneezing, runny nose, stuffy nose, cough, sore throat, and fever. And colds and flu overlap pretty heavily in that. People who have fever are more likely to have the flu, but cold viruses and other similar viruses, really, they really span the spectrum together. So there's really a range of severity for colds and flu and, and all kinds of respiratory viruses like them. At the mildest end, just a few sniffles, and at the most severe end, uh, life-threatening illness. Who's most at risk? So the people you might expect are the people who are most at risk. So the very young infants, particularly children under two, and the very old, people over 65, people with chronic illnesses, uh, people with diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, and immune deficiencies. And interestingly, some strains of flu are actually especially severe for young, healthy people because they have such a vigorous immune response that in turn can hurt things. So when you say most severe, what do you mean? What can happen? So people can end up in the hospital with the flu and, you know, between 10 and 30,000 people die each year in the U.S. from the flu. Wow. How do you catch the cold or how do you catch the flu? So all of these respiratory viruses are transmitted by the same kinds of mechanisms. So direct physical contact is one. What does that mean? That means I touch you. Okay. I have germs on my hand because I've touched my face and then I shake hands with you and you touch your face. Okay. Some of these viruses can also be transmitted indirectly through objects or surfaces. So for example, uh, I hand you my cell phone after touching my face and then you get the germs from the cell phone and touch your face. Wow. Uh, the third mechanism is probably the most important and that is that um, we are constantly emitting droplets from our mouth and nose not only when we sneeze and cough, which of course we all know about, but even when we laugh or talk and those carry the virus a dis maximum distance of about three feet face to face, so just about the distance that we're sitting right now. Wow, what can I do to protect myself? So there's a few things you can do. Uh, first of all, stay away from sick people to the extent that you can. Okay. And when you're sick yourself, try and stay away from other people. Wash your hands frequently, and the alcohol-based gels uh, protect just as well as soap and water from the vast majority of germs. And we tend to prefer them in the healthcare setting because it's easier to do them well. It's easier to do them quickly and well than it is to do a good job of washing with soap and water. Mm. Are all the, the alcohol-based hand sanitizers the same? They're not all the same, but they're equally good. Okay. Is there anything else you can do to protect yourself? The most important thing to do to protect yourself against the flu is to get vaccinated. The flu vaccine is far and away the most effective preventive that we have, and I wish we had vaccines for the other respiratory viruses as well. Is the vaccine safe? The vaccine is very safe. I have no hesitations. My children were immunized as infants. My wife was immunized when she was pregnant. How effective is the vaccine? At least 50% in most cases, sometimes as high as 75%. Uh, it's not as good as many of our other vaccines, but it's a new vaccine every year. And as a result, we can't always tweak it to get the level of protection we get with other vaccines. But it's better than not having the vaccine. Oh, it's much better than not having the vaccine. Even if it's only 50% effective, that means you'll, you've reduced your chance of being infected when you're exposed by twofold. 
And what about, does it, does it protect other people when you have the vaccine? It does. If you get the flu despite having gotten the vaccine, you're emitting much less virus, and so the people around you are protected. Okay. So who should get the vaccine? The flu vaccine should really be given to everybody who can take it. Uh, that means everybody over the age of six months who doesn't have an allergy to one of the components of the vaccine. And that's actually quite rare. It used to be that people who had egg allergies couldn't get the flu vaccine because the vaccine is produced in chicken eggs. But it turns out the modern vaccines have been getting more and more purified so that it's not necessary for people with egg allergy to avoid the vaccine anymore. People who have a history of anaphylaxis to eggs what should, that that's the very severe, life-threatening kinds of allergic reactions. Um, those people should check with their doctor. Uh, occasionally there are reasons to immunize them in a slightly different way. If I know that everyone around me is getting vaccinated, do I still need to get vaccinated? Am I protected because, because everyone else has the vaccine? The answer is yes, you have some protection because the people around you are vaccinated, if they are but it's important for you to get vaccinated as well. And there are several reasons. One is the vaccine isn't perfect. And so even the people around you being vaccinated doesn't protect you 100% by any means. In addition, the people who we worry about the most in terms of complications of flu are the people for whom the vaccine is least effective. So elders, people with chronic illnesses and so on. And so, young, healthy people getting vaccinated is important in protecting the people around them who may or may not be vaccinated, but even if vaccinated, aren't gonna be as protected. So when should you get the flu vaccine? As soon as it's available, which is typically September or October. What if you forget or you couldn't get it? Should you, is it too late to get it in December? No, even January and February are still worthwhile times to get the vaccine. The flu season, uh, varies from year to year in terms of both when it starts and how long it lasts. There are some years it goes well into April. But in general, as soon as it's available, you, you want to try to get it? Yes. How long does the flu vaccine last? How long does it protect you from the flu in the year? It certainly lasts through the whole flu season. Even if you get immunized in September, uh, you should be protected throughout the whole flu season. But you should get one every year? Every year, absolutely. The, not only because it might wear off year to year, but more importantly, because the strains of the virus vary from year to year, and each year's vaccine is prepared specifically for the strains we expect to come out that year. Are there any downsides to getting the vaccine? No, other than a sore arm and perhaps a little bit of fever. The flu vaccine does not produce any respiratory symptoms. People with flu vaccine don't sneeze or cough as a result of the vaccine any more than people who haven't been vaccinated. Sometimes people think that the vaccine has given them a respiratory illness. Generally speaking, that's because they happen to get the vaccine at around the same time they happen to get a cold or a respiratory virus. So if you, get, if you have a cold or the flu, how do you take care of the symptoms that, that make you feel lousy? You have trouble breathing, you're congested. Is there anything you can do for that? Flu versus other respiratory viruses, it's really the same. So you can treat symptoms with medicines, uh, acetaminophen or ibuprofen for fever and achiness. Uh, decongestants can help if your nose is very stuffed, although you want to be careful not to use them for too long or your body can get sort of dependent on them. Um, and cough medicines can be helpful in reducing the, the sort of soreness you get from coughing. In addition, some people find steam very helpful in opening up the nasal passages so they can sit over a cup of tea or they can buy actually a little steamer that they can insert their, their nose and mouth into and it'll, it'll gen gently generate some steam to help clear things up. And some people find the neti pot helpful, which is a device for using salt water to clean out the nose and sinuses. So you can at least feel a little better while the, while the illness runs its course. Exactly. Okay. So what should you do if you get a cold or the flu? A lot of this is about listening to your body. So you should rest, you should eat whatever feels right to you, 
you should stay away from other people so you're not passing the germ on to them. And there are certain circumstances or people who should be contacting their doctor. So anybody who has severe illness, and that would mean high fevers for more than a couple of days, trouble breathing or chest pain, difficulty keeping fluids down, anyone in those circumstances should call their doctor. In addition, people who have chronic illnesses like diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, or any kind of immune deficiency should also call their doctor at the first sign of a respiratory illness. Are there any prescriptions you can get from your doctor? All these things you're talking about, you can just get at your local drugstore. Flu is one of the few viral infections for which we have specific antiviral medicines, but they're not necessary or helpful for the majority of people. Uh, the people who really need the antivirals are the people who are most severely ill or people who have chronic illnesses that make them more likely to have complications of the flu. So severe illness we would define with as high fever and difficulty breathing such that they're at risk of needing to go to the hospital. And the kinds of underlying illnesses that might uh, generate the need for an antiviral medication are things like diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, and immune deficiencies. But for most of us, if we're three days into the flu, it's not going to work? Right. Antiviral medications only work if you start them very early in the illness, within the first 48 hours. Okay. What about antibiotics? Antibiotics don't help with viral infections. Telling the difference between a viral infection versus a bacterial infection that would benefit from an antibiotic isn't always so easy. So anyone who has severe illness should certainly call their doctor and potentially be evaluated to see if they have a bacterial infection that would require an antibiotic. But if it's a cold or the flu, then antibiotics don't work. Those are both viruses? Colds and flu, and actually the vast majority of respiratory infections we get in the wintertime are viruses and will not benefit from antibiotics. And antibiotics are relatively safe as medicines go, but they certainly have side effects and we're becoming more and more aware of some of the potential downsides of antibiotics as new research is emerging. What is antibiotic resistance? So certain species of bacteria, certain kinds of bacteria, are not susceptible to certain antibiotics. And this is an increasing problem the more we use antibiotics. In addition to the general problem of antibiotic resistance in the community, there's also an effect of prior exposure. So someone who has had an antibiotic and then gets another infection within the next few months has a much higher risk of that second antibiotic not working. We hear about covering your cough. What does that mean? How, are you sh how should you do that so you're not spreading? Any way that keeps the droplets from going from one person to another, from going out into the air, will help. The traditional method that we recommend is using the crook of your elbow. So when you are about to cough or sneeze, do that. And that captures the germs, at least, on your sleeve. It's not so great for your sleeve, but uh, it... <laughs> but it's better than using it with a hand, you're going to shake someone's hand. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Good. Good. What about things like chicken soup? Chicken soup is delicious, and I love it, but it doesn't really have any appreciable effect on protecting against flu or other viruses. Or vitamin C or other things that they sell at the drugstores um, that, that say they protect you from, from the virus, or they will, they will shorten the... Um, shorten the duration? There are many products which people have claimed protect against or help with flu, colds, and other respiratory illnesses. Unfortunately, the vast majority of them have no supporting evidence. It's probably better to save your money and spend it on tissues. Really? Um, the, w there's one product uh, that may help reduce the duration of colds, and that is zinc uh, as applied as a nasal swab or as a throat lozenge. Zinc lozenges and nasal swabs have some supporting evidence that they may reduce the length of illness. Okay, for colds and flu or? For respiratory illnesses in general. Okay. Our doctors are always telling us to exercise and get enough sleep and to eat right. 
Does that have any, does that help at all with protecting us or uh, from colds and flu? There's no question that exercising, eating healthily, and uh, getting enough sleep are very important for our health. They probably only have a minimal benefit specifically on preventing colds and flu. The, vac the flu vaccine is far more effective in protecting you than any amount of exercise, sleep, or healthy eating. This has been very interesting and very helpful. Thank you, Dr. Ben Kresko. It's been very nice talking to you, Robin. It's clear that people of all ages, over the age of six months, can stand to benefit from the added protection of the flu vaccine. But what about during pregnancy? Should women who are pregnant get vaccinated as well? It turns out that the answer is a resounding yes. Not only is it safe for pregnant women to get the flu shot, it's especially important that they do so. To learn more, Robin Ali interviewed Dr. Laura Riley, an obstetrician gynecologist specializing in infectious disease at the Massachusetts General Hospital. We're at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston with Dr. Laura Riley, Vice Chair of Obstetrics. Dr. Riley, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Are pregnant women and newborns at higher risk from cold and flu? If they get the flu, they are definitely at higher risk, and newborns who even get a cold are at higher risk for having complications. They're not necessarily at higher risk for catching a cold or a flu, but if it's, more it's more dangerous if they do catch it. Exactly. Okay. So there's no evidence that pregnancy you know, puts you at greater risk for getting the flu, but once you get it, there could be complications. And what kind of complications? What could happen? Well, the most recent outbreak that was you know, back in 2009, the really big H1N1 outbreak, showed us that pregnant women could die if they got the flu. Um, there were several women who were admitted to intensive care units. Um, and so those are the, you know, the worst end of the spectrum. But in general, we worry about things like preterm labor. We worry about smaller babies than should have genetically been so small. Um, so it's, it's no joke. Is there something biologically that makes pregnant women more vulnerable? It's probably something about the physiology of pregnancy, and so we know that the flu um, has more complications as you get into the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. So um, at that point, you know, the uterus is larger, women don't take a, can't take a big deep breath, something gets down into their lungs, it's hard to get rid of it. Uh, there's all sorts of things about pregnancy that just sort of make those complications harder to, to um, you know, really react to. But it's on, it could be very serious. Could be very serious. Okay. So how would a pregnant woman or the family of a pregnant woman know that she has a respiratory illness? What are the symptoms? So the symptoms of the flu generally include fever and cough, but you might also have malaise and sort of, you know, achy joints and things like that. I think that what's most important for people to understand is that if you have some new respiratory infection that's really quite severe um, in the middle of flu season, you got to think flu. Okay. And then what do you do? If you're pregnant, you need to go to your doctor and get Tamiflu. Um, because in pregnancy, we're so concerned about the complications that we don't even bother to test. Okay. If someone has symptoms consistent with the flu, even if they've been vaccinated, if they have symptoms consistent with the flu, um, then we will go ahead and just treat them. Uh, the reason for that is because in that epidemic that I was mentioning, we found that women who did not get um, medicine who did not get Tamiflu say um, within two days of presenting with their symptoms they had a higher risk of landing in the intensive care unit higher risk of death okay. all sorts of bad stuff so what is Tamiflu so Tamiflu is an antiviral that is particularly useful for influenza and that wouldn't be recommended for everybody, just people at high risk like pregnant women? Correct. Okay. So really only you know, pregnant women, other people who are at high risk for complications from the flu. Okay. Um, so you know, women who are severely obese or someone with um, some respiratory infection or diabetes, um, people with an immune system that's not working well. Um, there's kind of a long list of people who are particularly um, vulnerable if you will, once they get the flu? For most people, you wouldn't go to the doctor right away, but for a uh, pregnant woman, call your doctor right away. Don't try to treat this at home. 
Right. Do not try and treat it at home. Um, if you have a small child, you probably need to go to the doctor because we know small children, kids less than probably around the age of five or so, are at increased risk for complications um, from the flu as well. And then the difficult part, I think, for children is that their symptoms may not be the classic flu symptoms. So a lot of kids will present with a respiratory infection and no fever, which makes it difficult to make the diagnosis, but they may in fact have the flu. How do you know then that, that a, a baby or a child would, might have the flu? How would you know to call the doctor? I think if, obviously if a kid has a fever, okay. you need to deal with that. Um, but respiratory symptoms, okay. um, you know, kids who are just, you know, they're lethargic, they're not feeling quite right. I think you just have to, you know, have a high index of suspicion, especially if it's the middle of flu season. Right. And not necessarily just infants, small children as well. Small children. Okay. Small children. One of the ways um, to prevent flu is to stay away from people who are, who are sick. And if you're a mom um, or a dad, you may have other children right. that are um, going to daycare. It's, it's hard to, um, you, you can't keep away from your children. So what are your recommendations for preventing colds and flu in the first place? So I would separate colds and flu in the sense that, you know, for the flu, you can get a flu shot. Um, so that's the number one prevention. And everyone who's over the age of six months should get a flu shot every season. Um, the flu shot that you got last year isn't gonna help you this year. So you need another flu shot. Um, I think for colds, and for the same, by the same token, also flu, um, in order to protect yourself, you need to sort of have daily good habits. So hand washing is critical um, and, you know, cough etiquette, trying not to, you know, cough in your hands and then touch things. Um, and, you know, to the extent that you can, stay away from people who you know have the flu. And then if you think you have the flu, you need to stay home as opposed to go to work, go to school and spread it around. Now, should pregnant women also get vaccinated against the flu? All pregnant women should be vaccinated against the flu. So you, it's safe for, there's, a, you know I, know, I know a lot of women are nervous about putting right. things in their body, right. but the right. flu vaccine? So there's um, years and years worth of data about the safety of the flu vaccine. Um, and it seems to be completely safe in pregnancy and you can get it in any um, trimester of pregnancy. So you can get it in the first, second, or third trimester of pregnancy, if, obviously if it's the middle of flu season. Um, and the reason is, is that one, it's safe, but two, we know that the potential complications of getting the disease are so great that we need to do whatever we can to prevent you from getting it. Okay, so you would much rather have the flu vaccine than the flu. The flu is what, the flu's what's dangerous here. So. Exactly. Okay. So you said at any time in their pregnancy. So for the general population, you want to get the flu vaccine as soon as it's available. So you would say the same for pregnant women and if they haven't gotten it? Right. Okay. If you haven't gotten it, you know, and it's flu season, it doesn't matter whether you're in the first trimester, second or third trimester of pregnancy, you should get the flu shot because what you want to do is avoid getting the flu. Okay. And the flu vaccine, you said, does not protect you against colds? Does not, no. The flu okay. vaccine is um, trying to boost your, your immune system against influenza. Right. The cold, um, which, is, which could just be, you know, runny nose and upper respiratory type, you know, symptoms, um, congestion, that kind of thing, that can be related to all sorts of other viruses. Right, so not influenza. Okay, so that's where so, the hand washing and uh, absolutely. other precautions. Absolutely, so respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus, those are much more common you know, in the general population, and those are the things that could, could cause cold symptoms. Okay, how important is it for family members to be vaccinated against flu? Of, of a pregnant well, woman. Well, we're assuming that everybody over the age of six months gets vaccinated, but certainly I do tell my patients, you know, if your husband hasn't had a flu shot, if your mother hasn't had a flu shot, for sure this year is the year they need a flu shot because we need to protect you and we need to protect your newborn. So that's the other issue is that pregnant women who get the flu shot are also protecting their babies because the baby can't be vaccinated until it's you know six months of age. So the, the protection for the baby is zero to six months because the mother gives those antibodies that protect the baby. So the only other way to protect the baby, in addition to mom's antibodies, is the people around the baby being protected and not getting the flu. So anybody who might be visiting that, that child, Absolutely. It's, 
everyone should Critical. get the flu vaccine because we never know who's going to come in contact. Right. You know, with with and with that that would be true. There's other other high risk conditions that um, leave people more vulnerable more vulnerable to the flu as well. Yes, absolutely. So you know, if you have an elderly you know, aunt who's, you know, 90 and she gets the flu, things are not going to go well. In fact, the elderly are the ones who have the highest mortality, right? So um, you want to protect not only yourself and your, you know, tiny unit, but you want to protect the rest of your family, including mm. your elderly parents and grandparents, et cetera. Dr. Riley, this is a lot of great information. Um, are there any, what are the most important points you would like to leave our viewers with today? I think I just remind everybody that flu season is coming um, and that it's important to get a flu shot. Um, and it's probably your best protection against influenza. I think sometimes, you know, patients will say, oh, you know, I got that shot last year and it didn't help. I got the flu anyway. Um, we know that the, that the vaccine is not going to be 100%, um, but it, present, it prevents a lot of disease. And it may also, if you get the flu, make the disease less severe, potentially. Mm -hmm. So it's better to get the flu shot than to try and keep your fingers crossed that you don't come into contact with it because it's everywhere in the right. environment. And it's hard to know if we have the flu. It could be a cold or one of those other viruses that you mentioned. That's the other possibility. People say, oh, I got the flu shot and then I got, the, I, I got a cold or I got a flu anyway. Usually it's true, true and unrelated. They had a cold and they have cold symptoms. It's not the same. Dr. Laura Riley, thank you for all this excellent information. My pleasure. Thank you. As a pediatrician, I urge you and your family to get a flu shot this season. I know I will, and will be telling all my patients to do the same. To learn where you can get vaccinated, visit vaccinefinder.org, a service provided by Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical School in collaboration with U.S. government agencies. On behalf of the Massachusetts Medical Society, thank you for tuning in to Physician Focus. I'm Dr. Linda Grant. And I'm registered nurse Kathy Hassey. School children today face many health issues. Conditions like asthma, obesity, bullying and violence, and sexually transmitted diseases are high for children of all ages. Children spend more time at school than anywhere else except home. That's why school health is so important. Success in school is directly linked to a child's health. The school nurse plays a critical role in this effort with many responsibilities, including checking on vaccinations, screening for vision and hearing, and caring for students with chronic conditions. But school nurses are in short supply, and budget cuts have affected available services. To improve school health, parents, teachers, administrators, and students must work together. Every child deserves access to school health. To learn how you can help, visit the American Academy of Pediatrics at aap.org or the National Association of School Nurses at nasen.org. I'm Dr. Sean Palfrey. I'm Dr. George Abraham. The recent outbreak of measles across the country, due in large part to unvaccinated children, should serve as a stark reminder about the benefits of immunization. Vaccines are powerful medicines with an extraordinary record of safety in preventing disease and death, but too many people forget or ignore their benefits. The measles outbreak has brought welcome attention to the importance of childhood vaccinations, which can also protect against other dangers such as mumps, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Yet adults need immunization as well to protect against conditions like hepatitis, meningitis, and pneumonia. In fact, more than 50,000 adults die each year from diseases that could be prevented by vaccines, and millions more get sick. Vaccination is one of the safest preventive steps in all of medicine for both your personal health and our public health. Make vaccines an indispensable part of your health care. For more information, visit the Centers for Disease Control.